The PC vs console debate is an eternal thing, dear viewer, no matter how lopsided it is and always has been. And the world of awful games journalism is another eternal thing, dear viewer, no matter how many hernias are created by reading their articles. But when the worlds of PC vs console and awful games journalism collide, the end result is something always hilariously bad and endlessly entertaining. So on this fine Friday, I figured we'd kick back and read an article that was sent to me by a viewer a few weeks ago. In this way, whether you're a console console guy or a PC person, we can just come together, call a truce, and take part in something that all gamers enjoy equally, dumping on incompetent games journalists. Today's digital excrement comes from MakeUseOf.com, an outlet that I've made fun of in the past a handful of times, so it's nice to see that absolutely no improvements have been made. The article is called 7 Reasons to Switch from PC Gaming to Console Gaming, which is actually kind of an interesting angle to take. You know, typically articles like this one are just why you should get a console instead of a PC, so I'm expecting some really interesting opinions and unique points. I'm just kidding. I'm not expecting anything. Also, the article is written by someone named Dream Child, which is... A name. Uh, seven reasons to switch from PC gaming to console gaming. Contrary to popular opinion, PC gaming has its flaws. Here are some reasons you may want to switch from PC to console. I'm not sure if the popular opinion is that PC gaming has no issues. <laughs> But, uh, continue, I guess. <clears throat> PC gaming isn't as glorious as people have made it out to be. Customizability and flexibility with your hardware and software are great, but what if you don't need all that? What if all you need is a simple, efficient way to play a video game? Because there's nothing like people on the internet telling you what you do and don't need. If that's you, then it's time to leave your gaming PC or laptop alone and pick up a console, and we'll tell you all the reasons why you should do that here. God, this is a bizarre way to start this, you know? Like, you're arguing why you should move from PC to console, but then you're using, like, the simplicity argument, like, oh, what if you just need a simple, a simple way? You don't need customization and flexibility. But, like, in this setup for the, for the article, you're already, like, the person you're talking to is already on PC. So, why would, like, if you're already on PC, you probably aren't bothered by those things you just said. Because really, the only people who make an argument that the PC is too complicated or anything like that are people who don't play on PC, you know? If you're a PC gamer, I'd imagine you've figured out how to use a PC, you know? Like, maybe they're making the argument here that the console is simpler in general, which is true, I guess, but... I really don't see how it's a reason to convert to console, but hey, I mean, if, if there's anything I know about MakeUseOf.com, it's that they'll definitely do a really great job in this article of helping me understand their perspectives. Okay, first reason. Number one, console gaming costs less. Regarding upfront costs, you will spend much less to get started on a console than on a computer. For example, with a $500 budget, your best bet with the PC is to get a gaming laptop. That's not true. And any gaming laptop worth $500 is not worth it. Also not true. If you want to build a PC, the average cost of a graphics card alone is around $300. And uh, as usual here, no mention of the Steam Deck or other similar portable gaming PCs, which seems like a really obvious thing to bring up here. I mean, you brought up gaming laptops. But also notice how this argument doesn't even make sense, again, in the context of the fucking article. This is an article about why you should switch from PC to console. And in that context, why would the price to entry of a PC matter to you? You're already there. And, and I mean, as, as many of you probably know, the cost to entry of a PC is generally higher than the cost to entry of a console. I'd say if you're even remotely serious about getting into PC gaming, it's almost, it's pretty much guaranteed to be higher, a higher price to entry on PC than console. But that's because you're spending more money on a better machine, you know? You spend more money on a thing worth more, so obviously the price to entry is higher. But also, the cost of maintaining your hardware and your hobby in general on PC compared to console is way cheaper way cheaper on PC. Games are cheaper, hardware lasts longer, repairs are much more wallet friendly since if something if something breaks in your computer, you can just open up your computer, replace one part for what? Like I've, I've had repairs that had to cost me like 20 bucks. Compare that to a console, if something breaks, you gotta send the whole fucking thing in and probably get the whole fucking thing replaced. Maintaining the PC is much cheaper than maintaining a console, regardless of the console you choose. So even though the price to entry is higher on the PC, you're saving money in the long term. A long-term console gamer will most of Marker. A long-term console gamer will Marker. A long-term console gamer? Oh my god. Marker. 
a long-term console gamer will almost certainly have spent more money maintaining their hobby than a long-term PC player would have. That's just the way it is. But yes, tell us more about the price to entry of a console as a point for people who already have a PC, I guess. When, they, like, when this is the first point of your list, and we got seven points on this list, we're gonna get so stupid so quickly. Uh, the article continues. However, you can get a PS5 or Xbox Series XS for that amount. You'll enjoy good graphics and brilliant performance while also not looking cheap. You could even save more money and go a generation lower, leaving you a little extra that you could use to put towards a cheap gaming monitor. Even after you manage to build a PC, you still have to consider that there is a PC gaming culture of using the latest graphics card. If you want to keep up with that, it could cost you the price of a new console for each upgrade. Holy fuck. This dude really just said performance on console is brilliant. Can we just go back to that? Like, I thought we were all over trying to cover for the ninth gen console performance. Like, I, I thought we were all in agreement that both the Xbox and PlayStation leave a lot to be desired in the performance category this generation. I thought we were all in agreement on that, or am I just imagining all the 30 FPS caps that have been charging you $70? But also, why is the ability to buy a better monitor a plus for the console? when the console isn't even taking advantage of what a nice monitor can provide. Why would, like, why would you go out and buy a gaming monitor when the console is setting itself on fire to get above 1440p or 30 FPS? Like truly, as a PC gamer myself, why would you think this is a reason for me to switch? You're, you're just spelling out more reasons for me to never switch. Uh, they continue, on top of that, PCs are prone to running into software and hardware trouble because they are made of different detachable components and they often see way more use than consoles. Consoles can help differentiate your work hardware and gaming hardware and extend the longevity of both. <laughs> uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> First of all, it's perfectly possible to get PC ports running wonderfully, which is why the vast majority of them run wonderfully. So the vague point about software trouble is just kind of weird. Also, you seem to be under the impression that using your machines less extends their longevity, which might be true of cell phones, or cars, or dippin' dots. But PC hardware doesn't go bad, it doesn't expire, and assuming you take care of your machine, they don't even really diminish. I mean, according to Steam surveys, two of the most popular GPUs in use right now are the GTX 1060 and 1050 Ti. Like, if extending the longevity by using your PC less, like, if that really was something you had to do, the 1060 and 1050 Ti would not be near the top of the Steam survey. Moving on to number two. Number two, consoles get exclusives. Great. Cool. I like I like when we keep it simple. You can't play God of War Ragnarok on a PC, nor can. <coughs> Did you hear me choke on my own spit? You can't play God of War Ragnarok on a PC, nor can you play The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom on anything that's not a Nintendo Switch. PCs are generic machines that rarely get something exclusive in the same sense consoles can. Get a console if you would like to tap into the feeling of being part of something limited to a certain number of people. Aside from the fact that Tears of the Kingdom has actually been playable on the PC for longer than it's been playable on the Switch, because I, it, the emulated version leaked like two weeks ahead of time. And you know, as also aside from the fact that Ragnarok is 100% coming to PC at some point in the near future, because they, they wouldn't have put the 2018 game on PC if they weren't gonna put the sequel on PC. That, that doesn't make sense. But also, how do you think the PC doesn't get exclusives? The PC has way more exclusives than the consoles do. And no, they're not as heavily marketed as the console exclusives, but in what universe does that have anything to do with the quality of the games themselves, you know? One of the biggest launches of the year has been Counter-Strike 2, a PC exclusive. One of the biggest games in the world continues to be League of Legends, a PC exclusive. One of the most talked about games of 2023 was Baldur's Gate 3, which while not a true PC exclusive, was only available on the PC for a decent chunk of time while it was getting hyped up like everyone's most biggest game of the year. So like, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't a PC exclusive, but it was still proof against this idea that PC only games don't have hype around them. One of the best games I've played this fucking decade was Ultra Kill. I'm pretty sure that game's never coming to consoles. And one of my favorite games that I've played this year is Postal Brain Damaged, which is certainly never coming to consoles. But this last sentence here actually really bothers me. Get a console if you would like to tap into the feeling of being part of something limited to a certain number of people. Like yeah, no, that's that's a really generous way to spin pieces of art being held hostage for no reason other than the console manufacturers not actually wanting to make their platform better. 
Like, it's not a good thing that the experience is limited to a certain number of people. In fact, that's one of the biggest problems with the console as a whole. Because when you're putting money towards just snatching up a bunch of IP for you to box in, you're not only limiting those games' audiences significantly, but you're also completely ruining that game's ease of preservation. But it's not like you care about that, because you literally the next thing in this article is, quote, sometimes consoles also get early access to major AAA games, which is a big bonus for streamers and YouTubers. That's also one of the reasons consoles are on our pro gamer hardware checklist. Yes, hello fellow gamers, I too like video games and do not just care about where the money is. I couldn't decide on <laughs> I couldn't decide on an accent, so I did all of them. But yes, you heard it here. Console exclusives are a good thing because it benefits YouTubers. Also, go check out our fucking pro fucking gamer fucking hardware checklist fuck. Huh, number three, go mobile with portable consoles. For the for the second or third time in this article, it's like the Steam Deck doesn't exist to you. Huh, the only response PC gaming has to portable consoles is gaming laptops. And not only are those large, bulky, and difficult to lug around, but they also generate a lot of noise and heat. Unfortunately, gaming laptops just aren't optimized for playing on the go. Imagine taking out a bulky, hard-edged gaming laptop on the Metro, when instead, you could quietly pull out a Nintendo Switch Lite, waiting to get to your stop. Consoles answer the question of mobility with efficiency and style. Reminder that this article was published in June of this year, so, so there's literally no excuse for this one. The, you just straight up forgot the Steam Deck existed. Like, I, I was joking, I was joking a minute ago when I was like, oh man, it's like the Steam Deck doesn't exist to you. It's like, no, you, you genuinely don't think the Steam Deck exists. Um, yikes. Number four, games are generally better optimized on consoles. Oh goody, I love this one. It's in, it's in all of these. I, oh, fuck my, fuck. Fuck hole. When Hogwarts Legacy launched in 2023, console gamers had the time of their lives, creating memories in the virtual Hogwarts castle hitch-free. However, the subreddits were full of PC gamers complaining about how the game was laggy, buggy, or the animations were acting up. Not only were these issues caused by improper optimization upon its launch, but you could also blame it on the fact that PC gamers must adjust their game settings and hardware to handle games adequately. Um, yeah, wasn't Hogwarts Legacy patched, like, a few days after it came out on PC. I don't remember it being like a catastrophic disaster worthy of a top seven reasons to switch to console list, you know? I, I didn't I just didn't think it was that I didn't think it was that bad. But let's 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 rewind here. So the fact that PC gamers can adjust their graphic settings and make the game more fine-tuned to their hardware, you think that's a mark against PC game optimization? Like, yes, PC games probably have more out-of-the-box performance hiccups than a console equivalent would but that's precisely why there are graphical settings. The PC is targeting much higher performance metrics than the console is. You, like, you genuinely seem to think graphical options are a bad thing. Like, you say it yourself right here, not only were these issues caused by improper optimization, but you can also blame it on the graphic settings. Like, how are, how are you a real person? The article continues, it's difficult for developers to design a large game that caters to the various types of hardware available in the PC gaming ecosystem. The result is that some of the work is left for the players to figure out. This can make non-tech savvy players enjoy their games less, since each new game they play might be a troubleshooting episode. Consoles are based on the good old fashioned plug and play ideology. Insert your disc or cartridge and you can play as soon as the game loads without worrying about graphics and performance settings. Switching to console gaming can save you all that trouble. I love the thing that anti-PC gaming people do, where they're like, oh, in order to be on PC, you have to have all this insane knowledge and technical know-how, but you're talking about settings that are marked low, medium, high, and very high, or ultra. Like, if you can't figure out what those words mean, that's nobody's fault but yours. And the categories that you're customizing in the settings menu of games are pretty universal, you know? It's, it's gonna be stuff like texture quality, anti-aliasing, post-processing. Like, it's not like every PC game has a completely different, like, set of vocabulary words that you have to learn before you can customize it. Like, the experience of being in a PC game settings menu is pretty universal on this platform. It's like, you figure one out and you've figured all of them out. And sure, it can be a bit of a hurdle to get over it when you first start playing on PC, but you figure it out pretty quickly. Once you figure it out, you don't even think about it when you go into a different game. Like, it's not a technical hurdle, it's just a learning curve. The same kind of technical learning curve that you'd have experiencing 
like any new hobby. You also refer to consoles here as plug and play, which I'm, I'm just tired of hearing it. <laughs> consoles are not plug and play anymore. In fact, their startup process has basically become the same as what the startup process of a gaming PC is for the last, and as it has been for the last like two decades over here, minus the multiple launchers, I guess. But like when you plug in a console for the first time, it's going to have a bunch of initial setup progress bars, then you have to install or download games, and then you can play. When you boot up a PC for the first time, the process is going to be exactly the same as that, with the only addition being that you have to install a launcher, or maybe two, in between system setup and game installation. That's it. The process is virtually the same now. If you think consoles are simple enough for people to understand, you logically also have to think that about the PC. One cannot be too complicated while one is nice and simple. Like, that's just not the way things are anymore. You know, is the console experience more streamlined than the PCs? Yes, that's absolutely still the case. But is it plug and play? Not at all. And is it drastically simpler than having to use a gaming PC? Not at all. You console people really need to stop using this argument, because you're just insulting yourselves when you do it. <sighs> Number 5. Enjoy haptic feedback with console controllers. That's right, ditch your gaming PC because on the PS5 the controller vibrates sometimes. Johnson, you're a fucking genius. Two of the things we love about the PS5's DualSense controller are its adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. They give you an immersion you cannot get by using a keyboard and mouse. Experience mild recoil as you shoot a gun with haptic feedback, while the adaptive trigger will offer some resistance like you squeezed a trigger. If these features are a big deal for you, then it's time to switch to gaming on console. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I, I don't see the hype around this shit. <laughs> I just don't. And that's coming from someone who uses controllers a lot. I, I would I'd imagine I use controllers quite a lot for a PC player. I almost always turn the vibration of controllers off. So forgive me for not being that impressed with haptic feedback. And if you are someone who's impressed by this stuff, like surely it can't be so impressive that you ditch your PC for it, right? Especially since if you connect a PS5 controller to your PC, a lot of PC games support haptic feedback now anyways. Uh, number 6. Consoles discourage piracy and cheating. Funny that you bring this up, because I literally just saw a whole laundry list of tweets about people hacking on the MW3 beta with jailbroken PS4s. Which, um, wasn't the headline I was expecting in 2023, but hey, some, some things never change. And I guess as someone who grew up playing the Xbox 360, there, I guess there's just something nostalgic and weirdly endearing about the fact that there's there's still people out there jailbreaking their consoles to cheat in Call of Duty. <laughs> it's like sitting back into a warm snuggie. Like, yes, I'm I'm a child again. People are jailbreaking their consoles for Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> uh, online FPS and Battle Royale games are full of people trying to use aimbots, AI cheating software, and unethical hacks to get an advantage. Unfortunately, almost all of these people are PC players. PCs inherently provide software flexibility, allowing gamers to create and install all kinds of game mods and support software. Certain hackers even know how to disable anti-cheat programs that come with games. Ooh, dastardly villains they. Luckily, you can avoid that with a console. While online games these days allow cross-platform play, you can still choose to play with people using the same platform as you, and if you're a console gamer, you can rest easy knowing that the likelihood of running into someone that's cheating is very, very low. Look, are there less cheaters on console? Yeah, definitely. That doesn't mean there's none at all. And the longer these consoles are out, the worse that's going to get, because people are just going to keep figuring out the security snafus. And I'm just not convinced that Sony and Microsoft are going to be all that concerned with going in and banning people aimbotting. Like, I, I just don't feel like they're going to care all that much about that. Lastly, consoles discourage privacy. Privacy? It says piracy. I said I said privacy on accident, but it's like, ah, eh, you know, I guess they discourage that too now. <laughs> Lastly, consoles discourage piracy, and installing software on unmodified consoles is more challenging than on PCs. If you want to avoid the temptation of stealing games, risking fines, and viruses, you could just play on console. Or just don't do that. You know, like if you want to avoid those things, you can just not do them. Number seven, couch gaming and local multiplayer. Remember the times when you and your friends could hop on the couch and play some Mario Kart split screen? Well, those times still exist if you go back to playing on a console and really tired of the of the of the couch co-op and the couch multiplayer argument being used against the PC. Just go to Steam, look up local multiplayer, and you'll find tons of games that you can download, 
plug a couple controllers in and knock yourself out with and knock your friends out with. Or you can download an emulator and plug a couple controllers in and knock yourself out with some retro local multiplayer games that you will never get to play again on the console. Technically, it's possible to play some games using local multiplayer on a PC. Yes, only some. There's just there's just a sum. So that's the bummer. However, it doesn't offer the same ease as picking up a controller and turning on the TV. It's literally the same process. A good example of this is Fortnite. It's possible to play Fortnite split screen multiplayer on a PS5 or PS4, but the same functionality is missing in the PC version of the game. Console is better than PC because Fortnite split screen. That's a new one. Uh, the article concludes, enjoy the best of PC and console gaming. If you really want to enjoy your gaming and you can afford it, then you should try to use both consoles and PCs. Enjoy the exclusives, portability, and optimization of a console and combine it with the culture, power, and visuals of a PC. Discriminating will do nothing but hamper your gaming life. However, if you want to enjoy simplicity and save a lot of money going down a hardware rabbit hole, then this is your cue to abandon your gaming PC and embrace the way of console. I love how your big conclusion zinger here is like, oh, discriminating against one platform will hinder your gaming. Like, what have you been doing in this whole article? Exactly. You were just flat out wrong about most of the things you said, and it was all in the name of serving one platform. One could even say the goal of this article was to discriminate against one platform. If this wasn't some added motivation to never take anything from this website seriously, I don't know what will be. Like, literally everything I've ever read on this website has been fucking garbage, and apparently practice is never going to make perfect here, so I'll just have to keep an eye on them. Give them a nice little check-in from time to time. But, um, until next time, until the next video, I leave you with this piece of wisdom. Consoles are a ripoff. Don't buy them. Okay, toodles.